Between the current era of Formula 2 that restarted back in 2017 and the historic era of European Formula 2 back in the 1960s to 1980s, there was one other period, often forgotten about, that existed in the late 2000s to early 2010s. That championship, also known as FIA Formula 2, though with the 2 spelt out in English rather than in Arabic numerals, was started as a low-cost alternative to many of the championships that existed at the level just below Formula 1. However, as you might have already guessed, this didn't pan out all too well. So let's start this new series with arguably one of the most forgotten about championships that ever existed, FIA Formula 2. To start, we need to head back to 2008 and to a time where there was more than one viable way to Formula 1. At the time, the FIA was concerned about the ever-increasing costs of racing to reach the pinnacle of motorsport, and wanted to revive the Formula 2 branding in an attempt to create a low-cost series that would act as an alternative route to Formula 1 for drivers with smaller budgets. Their vision was to create a single-team run spec series, like what we see with the W Series today, where all the drivers would share the same personnel and run the same cars so that there was no outside influence to how each car would perform. Motorsport Vision Racing, run by former Formula One driver Jonathan Palmer, was selected as the organisation to run this initiative, while the tender for the race car itself was won by none other than the Williams Formula One team. A six-man team at Williams, led by legendary engineering director Sir Patrick Head, produced a car known as the JPH1. Powering the car was a 1.8-litre turbocharged engine produced by Audi and tuned by Mount Tune Racing. This engine produced around 400 brake horsepower under normal use, with the unit also fitted with a push-to-pass system, enabling an additional boost of 50 brake horsepower that could be used 10 times during each race for up to 6 seconds with each use. Now, this didn't make it the fastest car at this level, but it was a decent enough package for the purpose it needed to serve. So, in a nutshell, the proposed series would be competing against both GP2 and Formula Renault 3.5, and to a lesser extent, the Euro Series 3000, A1 GP, and the Super League Formula. So, quite the crowded market to try and capture talent that didn't quite have the budget to race elsewhere. The inaugural season in 2009 actually got off to a promising start with 24 drivers lining up on the grid for the first round at Valencia, with Canada's Robert Wickens taking the chequered flag first in both races. But unfortunately, the season was marred with an incredibly unfortunate incident in only its fourth round at Brands Hatch. During the second race of the weekend, on lap 9, Oliver Clark lost control of his car at the Westfield Bend, colliding with the tyre barrier. At the moment of impact, debris from the car, including one of Clark's wheels, was flung back onto the circuit. Henry Surtees, son of former motorcycle and Formula 1 champion John Surtees, was hit in the head by the loose wheel and was immediately knocked unconscious before colliding with the barriers at the bottom of the hill. Surtees would succumb to his injuries later that day, putting a dark spot on the championship from that point onwards. The rest of the season continued on without major incident, but it was still overshadowed by the terrible loss that happened that year. 2010 started where 2009 finished off, though with a slight drop in the car count to 22. This would ultimately lead to a rather sporadic driver count towards the end of the season, with the series dropping below 20 by the final round. Despite this setback, there was also the series' first foray outside of Europe with a race at Marrakesh. 2011 followed the trends set by 2010, with a slightly more erratic field of drivers and a discontinuation of the Marrakesh round. Nonetheless, the series still saw good competition throughout its stable 8-round calendar that was entirely based in Europe once again. Now 2012 is where the championship really started to feel the pinch of other series. While the first round was relatively well supported, the rest of the calendar saw car counts fall to just above 10 competitors. And while the calendar remained at 8 rounds, it did lose 3 schedule events as well, adding to the turmoil. And with both Formula Renault 3.5 and GP2 having one of their most competitive seasons, FIA Formula 2 was starting to look like a lost cause. It was then at the end of the year in December when it was announced that the series did not work as expected and would not be renewed for a fifth season. In the end, despite all the connections to Formula 1, only one driver who raced in the four seasons would eventually make it to the top tier category, but not before several years in GP2. So, was the four years worth it? Well, if there's anything that can be taken from the championship, it is the wake-up call for head protection to be implemented on open-wheel race cars. While Surtees' death wasn't the only incident cited for the Halo's edition, it was certainly one of the most egregious. 
And really, we already know the rest. The Formula 2 name would come back again in 2017 for another revival attempt, though this time back to using a Teams format, and after years of research and testing, a suitable head protection device was developed and adopted for wide-scale use in 2018. So while the championship was ultimately forgotten for its racing, it still had the one unfortunate moment that laid the groundwork for a major innovation in safety that has been widely adopted today and has arguably already saved several lives. Perhaps FIA Formula 2 was just too ambitious in its goals to be a low-cost alternative, when drivers were preferring to pay much more to race in more competitive series. And as the problems of skyrocketing budgets are still around today, it's hard to say whether or not another attempt would play out any differently. Thank you so much for watching. Did you like the new series idea? Please leave any thoughts in the comments section below. Like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and consider supporting me on Patreon for future work. My name's Jacob, and as always until next time, goodbye.